Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Premier Perspective. Today we are here with the one and only Cam and the one and only JD, two of the one and onlys. To talk about <laughs> to talk about um, today's Manchester City versus Manchester United game. Me and Ryan, as you guys know, are Man City fans. Uh, Cam and JD, who have both uh, been guests on our show, are United fans, so they're very happy today with the way the game went. Um, just to give a quick summary before we get into opinions, uh, first minute penalty to Man United. Bruno slots it in off a poor uh, tackle from Gabriel Jesus, a little bit unnecessary, but that's what it is. And uh, Shaw made Cancelo look like he should be playing JV high school soccer and scored a second goal in the second half, 2-0. That sums up the actual goals and highlights of the game. But in terms of, uh, you know, what happens, I have a lot to say. But uh, first, Cam, uh, thoughts on thoughts on United? I'm happy. Not, like, thrilled because I, I think, obviously – it was going to happen regardless. I just feel like it was a matter of what team was going to beat Man City. I agree. Uh, I, I think you guys are going to win the league anyways. So, I mean, it is what it is. But I'll take the individual battle. I liked it. Uh, we played a lot more direct. And our counterattack was – it gave me goosebumps. Uh, I think we capitalized really well. We got lucky with the with the penalty. But, you know, Bruno Fernandes does what he does best and, and, uh, and scores him. And then, uh, obviously, the second goal by Luke Shaw was, was – again, showcasing how we should have played from the beginning. I don't know where this was in previous matches. I mean, we played really, really well. Uh, and then on the counter, we broke fast. It was direct. It was quick. Not my personal favorite style of play, but very, very effective. And uh, no, I, I have no complaints, to be honest with you. I'm really, really happy with, with how the game went. Yeah, um, I think United played well. Uh, I didn't think they were great, but they did play well. I thought they played better than City did. Um, I think what was the key for uh, United today were both of their fullbacks. Luke yeah. Shaw on the offensive end, going through counterattacks, playing well, got the goal, was causing havoc the whole game. And then on the other end, uh, Juan Basaka having a great defensive performance, as we've seen. Something that I've I've noticed a lot when watching uh, Juan Basaka play, I think out of all defenders, not even just fullbacks, but all defenders in the world, his tackling is superb. Yeah. It's almost ninety yeah. percent of the time I feel like he gets in on the perfect tackles. I think he's great when it comes to that. But uh, JD, a uh, question we have for you: Who would you say was uh, United's man of the match today? That's. It's between two players for me, Martial and Maguire. Okay. I think defensively, we were spotless. I mean, like, we were perfect. Attacking, mm -hmm. I, I don't think we even can. I think we could have done better. In the first half, McTominay and Fred, they couldn't get a pass off. The forwards, they, we were playing in our own half for most of the game in the first half. Second half, obviously, we played much better. But Martial, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised on his performance today. You know, usually we see a lazy performance, but they held the ball up well. He should have scored. 100% should have scored. Yeah, that one-on-one -on -one with Ederson definitely yeah, should have yeah, finished that. that. They, yeah. they, they're they showing our, they're showing the angle of that, Marshall. You know, like they show the angle of where the goal score is. And his far post was so wide open. I don't understand why Martial decided to go near post and then Ederson was able to make a, a fairly easy save there. But this game really showed how much we missed Agba. You know, McTominay, Fred. I like Fred personally. McTominay, I'm not a fan of McTominay. Really? I love McTominay, man. No. I think Fred and Pugba together would be good. Or McTominay and Pugba. But we really missed Pugba supplying the ball to Bruno Rashi. We this couldn't get a pass through. This man we couldn't get a pass through. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think uh, when I'm watching, like, I feel like Fred... Uh, I noticed a lot from Fred today more than McTominay, but I feel like Fred gives the ball up a lot. Like, he, he seems to have issues sometimes, yeah. um, you know, distributing the ball. And I don't know why it's like that, um, but it is. And I think that, you know, he needs to do a bit of a better job in terms of uh, keeping the ball. But I think United did play play good, though. And uh, Rashford and Martial, like you said, like on the counterattacks, they were good. And, 
in terms of United's performance, I think they did what they had to do. And uh, like you said, Cam, you were saying uh, you wish that they would play like they did today more often. I think the issue with that yeah. is that um, going into a game versus Manchester City, you're almost – you're going in with the mentality that you're probably not going to be having the your fair share of possession. So then United at that point is forced to, you know, play a bit more defensive and then play on the counterattack. If yep. In games where you see United struggle, like uh, even if you think of their previous fixture, how they tied against Crystal Palace, you know, the time there, you know, they're forced to play possession ball. And I feel like a lot of times when you see United play that pure possession, when it's not really back and forth, when it's more one-sided towards United, they seem to have a bit of a creative struggle. And I feel like yeah. that's what it is. But when they're on the counter, United always looks great. They're dangerous. Yeah, they are. Very, Especially very with the speed. If you look at Rashford, Martial, um, and James, like those players are so fast and you're getting distribution from Bruno, who's a who's a great player. I, I honestly didn't think he played that good today, but um, – but Bruno's a great player who distributes the ball well. And, you know, when you have those players at top, you know, a lot's going to happen. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, now it's time to switch to what I want to talk about, which is uh, Man City and the t- how they tactically play today. Um, anyone who knows me knows how much of it, um, how much of I love Pep Guardiola. Like, uh, the day he came to City, I was so happy. I think that he's been great so far, obviously still waiting for that Champions League that I feel like I still believe that this year is our best shot at it than any time beforehand. No doubt. No but doubt I think with City, the issue today was they didn't set up well. I thought that Pep dropped players that he shouldn't have. Um, personally, I think that Cancelo should have started at left back and Walker play the whole game. The reason why I say that is because Rashford and Shaw are going to constantly cause havoc throughout that left flank. Yep. I think Walker is a better defender than Cancelo, and he's faster than Cancelo. So I would have rather have had Walker there, Cancelo on the left, helping out Sterling, who needed help with Juan Basaka. Yeah. And Cancelo would have done way more on the left than he did on the right side. I wouldn't have even played Sterling today. He's known to have disaster performances against Juan Bazaka. I thought Foden should have started from the beginning. He came on in a 60-something minute. And from there, City there. looked better. The second he came on, City looked like a such such a better he's, team. He's incredible. He brings he, so much he energy. Brings so much energy. He, he, he moves the ball quick. I think that he should have been there from the beginning. I think that um, De Bruyne should not have started today. As much as I love De Bruyne, I still feel like he's not 100% back from the injury that he was out a long time for. Uh, Bernardo's been great these last games. I feel like there was no need to drop him for De Bruyne. I would have much rather have seen Bernardo play, play that energy, and then if, if it's 60, 70 minutes into the game and you feel like you need more creative juice, then bring De Bruyne on. I feel like that would have been much better. And another thing that I don't understand is how – uh, Pep says that Aguero is match fit, and we're talking about one of the best strikers to ever play this game. One of the best Premier League strikers ever. Yeah. And he's saying that Aguero's match fit, that he can play, and you're down, and you don't even bring him on for 10, 15 minutes. I don't get it, but hey, I, I think Pep thinks too much in these big games, and I think that's what costs us Absolutely. today. I feel like something's got to be going on with that. I don't necessarily think he's match fit. I, I, maybe there's something we don't know. Again, there's a lot of stuff that like goes behind the scenes and stuff like that. It is confusing. I don't know. I, I feel like you guys should have changed something up. You can't go into a match with the same, you know, idea, same thing. It's just not going to work. And usually he's really, really good with that. Um, and, and he changes it up and he changes his tactics. But I, I just don't know why he, he kind of just – Drop some players that shouldn't have been dropped. I agree with uh, with Foden as well because Foden's a class player. I think he's amazing. I think he would have added something. And then Sterling gets caught. It's true. Sterling is an attacking player, uh, and then for him to kind of be on more defensive mode than attacking mode cripples that entire left side, and and that's what really ruined it for you guys as well. Aside from you guys missing a lot of chances too, so that's that's another key aspect. Yeah, I think uh, being more clinical is something that's important. Uh, yeah. I think we've seen goals from all over City. I think they said during the game today that 14 or 15 different players have scored for City this year during the prime season. 
and um, Foden being one of them. And I think, uh, uh, you know, I think that he should be playing from the beginning every single game. And if that means Sterling has to get benched, that means Sterling has to get has to get benched. Um, also, two players that I saw uh, that I want to actually give some praise to you today from City's end that I thought played well. I thought uh, Zinchenko played well. I thought he was trying his best on the left side. You know, uh, he was with Sterling, who was struggling a bit, so it's a bit more difficult for Zinchenko to do as much as he wanted to. But I thought he created, uh, you know, some good support from the left back position. And also Morris, who I thought that um, should have been fed more throughout throughout the game. Uh, I don't know if you saw that one play where he he literally dropped Luke Shaw to his knees. Yeah, I think Morris is such an amazing dribbler. Um, I'm actually not too crazy about him in the past. I've been one to criticize him uh, very heavily. I really don't but, care for him the majority of the time. I'll be honest. I, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm with Every you once on in a that. He'll have a moment of magic, but yeah, for the most part, yeah, for the most part, I really don't. I really don't care for him. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Ryan. But um, these last couple games, uh, Riyad has been been playing really well. He's been being very creative, you know. He's that typical Robin type player, bring yep. cutting in on the left foot, and um, I thought the game beforehand with, with this for City against Wolves, um, he played his best game in the City shirt, and I would have liked to see um, him get more of the ball. Also, considering the fact that Sterling wasn't playing that well. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. A lot of things. I mean, I I just feel like it was one of those days. I feel like eventually yeah. it was just going to happen. It was. I, I don't really like the way Pep Guardiola. I don't know the way I saw a couple of the, the press conferences before. I would be a little bit more, how to put it, a little bit more confident in the way he would say. Because he, he gives so much credit. Oh, menu is good. This and that. I'm trying to win. I would yeah. tell him, man, menu sucks. We're winning. That's what I would go. You know what's funny is conference. I actually did see a uh, uh, press. He does that all the time, though, where he, he gives does it all the time. He gives I don't know if it's a lot of praise. Work today, so yeah, he gives a lot of praise to the other team. He constantly oh, does that. He was like, garbage. I remember there was one where he was like, "Oh, we're playing uh, Chelsea. Chelsea's a great team." Yeah, and then they were like, "Oh, what makes you say that?" And he was like, "Because they're Chelsea." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and okay. then this time he was like, "This time he <laughs> at the end he goes, it's guys, it's it's Manchester United, like." I, no, I think I, I that we easily, it, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I think I think I think City easily has the best team in the prime, and I think yeah. we should be going into every game with the idea that we're gonna win it. You you have um, to have that I think that I you think, however, though, um, for Pep, I think this was a good learning moment. I would hope it was. Knowing Pep, maybe it wasn't because he's still gonna be him. But I feel yeah. like today kind of was a good learning moment because. Even with him saying that, I think he did go into the game thinking that they were going to cakewalk. Yeah. I think that he thought that, and that was his problem. And I think he now can realize that in terms of the Champions League. I think he knows now that this year is our best chance of winning the Champions League and that he needs to pull out big performances because it's not only about the team, it's about his legacy too. Because now if we're looking at City, let's say – let's say they don't even make the semifinals. Let's say they, they pass the next round, they get knocked out in the quarters. That's going to be what his fifth season getting fifth knocked time. out and not even getting <laughs> to the final four of the champions league. And for a manager of Pep Guardiola's uh, category, I, I mean, I think he, he expects more from himself, but you know, that's only a matter of time to see. I'd be very curious to see how obviously the, the fan base will react if, uh, you know, he, he gets kicked out and in the in the quarters what would happen with them would like even if he wins the prem mm-hmm. are are they gonna take it like oh okay we'll keep him or they'll ship him out because he's mm. showing so much money yeah that if i was an owner mm-hmm. i would say yes you got me prems but mm-hmm. you're, you're spending a good a good chunk of my oil money mm-hmm. i, I kind of want a bigger trophy yeah like, um, not to be greedy but again it's it's yeah again, no it's I, I, a trophy but you got to deliver if you're if you're spending that much much money every single year. Yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree with you. I think that a final appearance is the minimum for City this year. Yeah. I think anything other than making the final is a disappointment. In terms I agree. Of the squad we have and the way we've been playing. So maybe they decide to take it in another direction. I 
if we don't make to it the Champions League final this year, I would be okay with Pep Guardiola leaving the team, honestly. This is the longest he's been with any other team, so I'm actually surprised he stayed. I think it's because, because he usually he usually yeah. ends it at the third year. I think the reason why is because he realizes how much support he has. Yeah. In terms of the city board and the players, usually what happens with Pep Guardiola teams is that they they can only play with his system for so long that they eventually get drained. Yep. And with City, he's seeing something different. Because they're still, this is now his, I think, fifth season, and they're looking as great. They're looking right now the best team that he's had in his five years. Yeah. So I think that's what's the main factor. I think Champions League is the goal for him, and anything less is is a disappointment. But a uh, a yeah, a lot of pressure, and that's uh, only time can see for that. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up our our you know video for today's game. I think United. Uh, took advantage of City being lackluster and did what they had to do. Um, thank you again for uh, Cam and JD for coming on today. Thank you, we really guys. appreciate uh, you guys coming on to the show whenever. Uh, for anyone who hasn't checked it out yet, check out uh, Cam's new podcast, uh, a Ramble uh, podcast. Uh, it's been good so far. I've been watching some of the <laughs> some of the videos so far. I'm liking, liking what I see. Uh, me and Ryan are definitely going to be on soon, so. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you you that. bet you we'll, better believe, better believe <laughs> so we'll, it. Yes, we'll sir. see we'll see that collaboration uh coming soon. But uh, yeah, well, we want to say thank you to anyone who's checked out our videos, who's shown support so far. We're gonna be back later in the week with the uh, first half of the second legs for the Champions League. Gonna be some good games. See if uh Cristiano can pull the comeback versus Porto, how Liverpool plays. It, another miracle for Barca. Don't think so, but we'll see. And yeah, it's going to be some good games. So like I said, uh, thank you for all the support and we'll see you guys soon.